You know, I think the, in, in many ways the most telling moment of my visit to North Korea was a very quiet moment. It was over lunch where I was sitting with my minder, who's an analyst at the North Korean Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Smart guy. Yeah. Just Speaks that one or there were other English. folks there? There were always other folks yeah. in the background. So they haven't changed that? Yeah. No. Okay. But in this case, you know, we're having an honest conversation. I mean, uh, one of the things I was told before going to North Korea by friends who spent a lot of time working on it, analyzing it, they said, if they offer you a drink, say yes. And I said, why? And they said, because it makes them more comfortable. Mm -hmm. They're more likely to talk. So strangely enough, when you're writing about North Korea, you end up drinking a fair amount. <laughs> So here we are at lunch having a North Korean beer and we're watching on television as Kim Jong-un comes on the screen and says that he might rain terror down upon the United States. I'm paraphrasing here, but it was a version of the same idea that we've heard over and over. And I, and I turned to my counterpart, this guy named Park Sung-il, who's 35 years old, has a five-year-old son, speaks perfect English. I mean, it's sort of a plugged in guy. And I said, Give me a break. Do you honestly imagine, honestly, mm -hmm. that you could have a nuclear exchange with the United States that would not be a cataclysm for you and for the rest of the world? And he said, yes. You know, we have suffered terribly in our history. We've survived the Korean War. We survived the famine. And we would survive this too. Not everyone, he said, but some. Mm -hmm. And that is a chilling message to get from somebody who is not a lunatic. You know, this is not a jihadist in a cave who is muttering about martyrdom. This is a man who works for the government who is as plugged in as anybody in North Korea, has access to the internet, and is telling me as lucidly as possible that he really believes that the North Korean self-narrative is such that if necessary, they would survive an encounter with the United States. Well, certainly the willingness of the North Koreans to take pain is a hell of a lot greater than the average person in the developed world, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a narrative we've seen before. And it's really part of their self-image, which is sometimes we overlook from afar. But, you know, they take pride in the fact that they were eating bark in the 90s and lived through it. You know, they take pride in the fact that they've been an enemy of the United States for 70 years and have not succumbed. Mm -hmm.